something you may already know is that in the United States, every day, children are being sold for sex acts. Under federal law and most state laws, these children are considered victims of child sex trafficking. What you might not know about sex trafficking is that many of these children face criminal charges for prostitution. Under many states' laws, these children can be charged with the crime for their own victimization. This serious conflict in our state laws affects children, victims of sex trafficking across our country every day. I've been picked up by cops more times than I can count. I always felt like a criminal. I never felt like a, a victim at all. Victims don't do time in jail. I've been pulled over, put in handcuffs. I grew to hate the police because you're supposed to be there to protect people, but you're not even helping me. Oh, me and a minor, they don't discriminate. You're handcuffed, you have shackles on your feet. What we do to children in this country is, is very unfortunate, and they pay the price of what has happened to them. Where's the justice in that? We have children who have been victimized, raped constantly, night after night, and then they're arrested, and that is backwards. It just further stigmatizes them and says, you are the bad person. You're going to get arrested for this. And it's like, why should they talk? Why should they change? States still criminalize um, children for prostitution because we have not evolved. We've done the awareness, we've done things to move along with this issue, but the laws are still in place. They may not look at themselves as a victim, and just because they're not identifying themselves as a victim does not mean that they are not. I never knew that I was a victim. I never knew that what these men had done to me um, wasn't my fault or I didn't ask for it. You would think this is basic knowledge, basic understanding. We can't blame the victim. I think that uh, states still prosecute minors because it's easier. When you strip everything down and you take an individual for who they are, they're not a bad person, they're not a perpetrator, uh, they're not somebody who's chosen this life. They were once a child um, and they have had experiences that no child should ever have. The last thing that these kids need with all the trauma in their backgrounds is a criminal record. We don't criminalize kids. The fact that we do is an indictment on us as a society, period. There's this paradigm shift that happens when a youth is transitioned from being a delinquent to being a survivor or a victim of a crime and their willingness to cooperate with law enforcement and their willingness to enter services and start to heal from their trauma. Once that kid realizes that this was something that was done to them and not something that they did, the whole game just changes for them too. For those who haven't done already, decriminalize kids today, period. If you want to fight this crime, that's your first order of business and it really takes the community to come together and recognize that and put something together that will help propel that, that young uh, man or woman forward. It's not something that any of us can do alone. I can't do it by myself as the judge. The prosecutor can't do it uh, themselves as law enforcement or the police can't do it uh, by themselves. But when you add uh, counseling and mentoring and other supportive services that can help these young men and women see that there's another way that they can live their life, then we can really make a difference pushing them forward. The most universal thing among the young people we serve is, is that need to love and to be cared for unconditionally from someone who wants nothing in return. And what that looks like is just coming along beside them in a non-judgmental, very accepting, unconditional way. This is a lifetime journey of healing in that there are going to be relapses, there are going to be bumps in the road, but that doesn't mean you just throw your hands up and give up. When a victim survivor receives positive care, support, they blossom. Like, they start dreaming again. They start thinking about the future again. And they realize that they're in control now. Shared Hope has been advocating to address the conflict in these state laws for over seven years. 
and there's been a lot of change in those years. But there's still much work to be done. And understanding the problem is the first step towards stopping the injustice and ensuring that child sex trafficking victims are not arrested for the crime committed against them, but instead are identified and connected with specialized services. Please join us in the campaign to stop the injustice. Your voice is vital.